Hi, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to implement a login and registration system using JWT. We'll be working on both the server side and the .NET MAUI client side. In the previous video, we set up a JWT web API. If you missed that one, you can find the link in the pinned comment below. Let's get started by adding your web API project to the solution and locating the auth controller. We're going to add a register action that allows users to create new accounts. When you start typing, GitHub Copilot will suggest and complete the code for you. Next, create a simple model called register model with two properties, email and password. Back in the register action, first we'll validate the model state, then check if the email already exists in the user table. If the email doesn't exist, we'll create a new user account. If the account is created successfully, assign the default role user to the new account. Once that's implemented, you can test the API by running the website and visiting slash swagger slash index dot html. Also, open the AspNet roles table in your database and make sure the user role exists. If it doesn't, add it so role assignment works correctly. Now switch to your .NET MAUI project, then create a folder named Services and inside it add an interface called iAuth Service. This interface will declare two async methods, login async and register async. Next, create a folder named Models. Inside, add a class auth response with a token property. This model will receive the JWT token returned by the API. Now create a concrete class auth service in the services folder that implements iauth service. We'll use HTTP client to call the web API. For login async, we'll build a request to the API's login endpoint, then send the credentials with HTTP client and read the JSON response. If the login is successful, we'll extract the token from auth response. Finally, save the token securely using secure storage. For register async, follow the same pattern but call the register endpoint. If the register response indicates success, return true. Otherwise, return false.
Now open the Manage NuGet Packages window and install the Microsoft.Extensions.Http package. This package helps us manage and configure HTTP client easily. Next, open MauiProgram.cs, then add an Addy HTTP client registration with your API base address. Register iAuth service and auth service with the service container so they're injectable. Make sure you copy your web API URL into the base address. Now open register page and inject iAuth service. First, we'll read the email password and confirm password from the UI. If the passwords don't match, display an error alert. Otherwise, we'll call the register async method. If registration succeeds, we'll show a success alert and use navigation pop async to go back to the login page. If registration fails, we'll show a failure alert. For the login page, we'll do the same. We'll inject iAuth service into the login page. First, we'll verify that the username and password are not empty. Then, we'll call the login async method. If the response contains a non-empty token, we'll navigate to the main page using dependency injection. If the login fails, we'll show a login failed alert. You can also create a service helper class to resolve services from the current MAUI context. This keeps page creation consistent with dependency injection and makes navigation code simpler. And that's it. We've finished setting up the login and registration pages with JWT. Now you can go ahead and test it on a Windows device. You can set breakpoints on the login and register actions to observe what happens when the client sends data to the server. Next, let's switch to the mobile emulator to test it on Android. When testing on an Android emulator, remember to change the API URL. Replace localhost with 10.0.2.2 so the emulator can reach your host machine. Also, change HTTPS to HTTP if your local development server doesn't use a valid certificate.
If you'd like, in the next video, I'll show you how to use the bearer token to access the web API, perform basic CRUD operations, and handle bearer tokens automatically in HTTP client. Thanks for watching. If this helped you, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment with your questions or tell me what you'd like to see next. See you in the next video.